All right. Okay, so four o'clock, let's get started. Thank you everyone for joining um, the series of CRM COE, educating the CRM COE leaders and uh, product owners, specifically IT or business product owners in understanding the challenges um, of the release management. So today, uh, January 21st, 2022, we are going to be speaking about Salesforce or CRM release management. Specifically, today we are going to talk about Salesforce. CRM has got a lot of uh, a lot of CRM tools out there or platforms out there, but today we are going to be speaking about Salesforce uh, release management. So when we talk about Salesforce release management, um, there are two things. One is the product specific and the platform specific. So we will talk about the challenges and then how to overcome the challenges and so that we can start innovating, con innovating continuously. So we have two great thought leaders today, uh, Janiel Patel from uh, Simplus, Marcus Gidland from HTSC Corporation based in Chicago. Um, so I would like to invite Janiel to introduce yourself. Sure, thank you, Bela, I appreciate that. So my name is Janiel Patel. Uh, I lead the, the Healthcare and Life Sciences Center of Excellence at Simplis. Uh, Simplis is a Summit Salesforce uh, partner, um, and uh, we also happen to be an Infosys company uh, and went through an acquisition a couple of years ago. So pleasure to be here today and uh, very excited for the discussion. Oh, thank you, uh, Janiel, Marcus. Yeah, thanks, Willow. Um, my name is Marcus Goodlam. I'm a uh, senior director IT product management for HCSC, which is Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, for Illinois, Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Montana. Um, I work within the customer engagement area where I have uh, responsibility for a number of uh, products, uh, one of them being a, um, a Salesforce customer engagement used in our uh, call center, contact center areas. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, my name is Velu Palani, and um, I do work for HCSC. Um, I help the Salesforce platform. The senior director um, managing um, uh, the Salesforce platform across HCSC. And I also lead the CRM COE. It's a community driven um, um, events, I would call it. Call it. So pretty much um, uh, we give back to the community. So I, I lead that CRM COE initiative. And before we get started, um, so please, um, the participants, if you could please mute yourselves and put your questions in the chat window, we will answer the questions at the end. And then the, this program is being recorded and will be available on crmcoe.com a week from now. So you should be able to access it. And then once it is uploaded, I will also send out an email. So let's uh, get started. Um, so we are, um, we, we have a pretty um, kind of um, good agenda in terms of how we are going to talk about the Salesforce and the, the release management and the challenges and um, how do you manage the development, deployment schedule, the best practices. And then at the same time, when you talk about two release management, one is the product and then the other one is going to be a platform. So we will talk about how to synchronize and innovate. And finally, we will have time for Q and A. And if there is not too much time left, you are always welcome to reach out to us through LinkedIn. Our information is available. So we will be happy to answer as much as we can. Once again, thank you for joining. So let's get started. Um, so when we talk about um, release management in, in any CRM product, so nowadays, you know, we I've been in the system for a while, ecosystem for a while, um, it, it used to be more like projects, CRM projects. Now it has become more like a product. So if you are running a customer service Salesforce instance, uh, it used to be a project. Now the companies are shifting to a product mindset. So, so you continuously release and innovate and then showing, show the value to, the, to your customers. 
when it comes to the platform release, which is the Salesforce side of it, Salesforce releases three times a year, as you all know, winter, spring, and summer. And then certainly it's not just the major three releases. They do release uh, emergency defect fixes. It may not be available to the public. So let's quickly um, get to the point. So these are the two releases that we are aware. So I want to ask a question to JNL. How much importance companies give to each release? As a COE leader, what's your perspective? And if you can share your experience, what do you see out there in terms of the importance of these two releases? Sure, absolutely. Thank you for that question, Leilu. So I, I do feel uh, just generally looking at the landscape, uh, working in Salesforce, uh, we do see that uh, predominantly, uh, companies pay a lot more attention to the product releases. Uh, there's a sense of rallying behind it, right? Because you, you own that, you have a vision for it, you have leadership alignment on that. Uh, you're, you're uh, you know, investing your own funds to, to develop those products and, and those releases. So there's a, a stronger level of focus that kind of comes into play. Uh, what has often happened, and, and I think this is kind of, it's a process of trial and error where uh, mature companies are a little bit better about this, but the companies that are just adopting, say, CRM, especially Salesforce, it, it ends up becoming a bit of a learning experience, and, and I should say more, more or less a firefighting experience where, you know, Salesforce platform releases are there, but organizations often may not be prepared for it, prepared enough, right, in terms of assessing to see what those changes are. Uh, how do they actually impact what existing code may be out there in production? Um, and what new features that the product releases uh, is uh, putting in that perhaps could be impacted with the, with the platform release that's also coming in? Uh, not to mention perhaps not even leveraging the innovation piece of, of the opportunity that the platform may be bringing that the organization's already paying for as part of the license. Uh, so there, there's a little bit of that trial and error and learn through the going through the process of firefighting and a little bit that maturity that starts to you know, go through that in its natural curve for the platform release. But I do see that a lot of time the emphasis is on the product release for sure. Thank you, uh, Janiel. So Marcus, um, you have an interesting um, challenge that you and I have uh, spoken in the past. Um, what's your perspective between these two uh, product and platform release management? What are the practical challenges that you face? Yeah, uh, thanks, Blue. Uh, yeah, they, they, this is both of them are really important, right? I mean, just, just like Janelle was saying, you know, a lot of my focus is going on the product release because that's what I'm delivering for my business. That's what they're asking for, right? But right. you can't ignore the platform release because if you do, you're going to reactively be, you know, potentially having to fix production issues and things like that, right? Or you may be doing things inefficiently. You're not going down the right path in your in in your in your design. You're not taking advantage of the enhancements that are coming through Salesforce. New things that you can do. You know what to what you were saying, Willow, what you're paying for, right? You're paying for these licenses, and Salesforce is introducing more and more features that if you're not paying attention here, you wouldn't know that they're there potentially, and right, and or that you can take advantage of them. Um, and some of the challenges comes in around the, the timing, uh, a lot of that the timing of the product release with the platform release, hmm. right? Where you're you're getting the preview version from the Salesforce platform, and you need to you know make sure that you're not sequencing your product release incorrectly with a platform release so you don't have an opportunity to react to something that you're noticing in your platform release right you always want to have that time so that you can if you do encounter an issue during the platform release uh, preview that you can address that before that goes to production no that that makes sense uh, marcus um when we um, so the comp is what I'm understood. I just want to make sure that my understanding is correct, and also the people who are going to be watching this video, uh, we are uh, clearly articulating the challenges that we are facing. Are so the product release is managed by the company, like HSC, whereas the platform release is managed by Salesforce. 
so obviously you were a baby. I would, I don't know whether it's the right analogy, but uh, you probably take care of your products more than the platform release. But at the same time, we cannot ignore because uh, you, you know, you customize quite a bit when it comes to uh, your product. And it is you are customizing on top of Salesforce. And when you are customizing it, you need to make sure you're paying attention to the platform release, at least for making sure it doesn't break when they move from one release to the other, right? No, exactly. I mean, platform release, the timing there, you don't have as much control over. Salesforce sets that, right? So you've got to make sure that you're looking at your product release and making sure that that fits into the schedule. Uh, I agree with you on that. I think it's a, it's a very, very uh, critical piece for all of us to understand. We pay, pay attention and uh, make sure that we are timing it out at the same time. We are not just looking at in terms of uh, the timing, make sure that we are taking the, innov- the advantage of the innovation sales force. So we will continue to talk about this just, just uh, um, for everybody to understand that you know product release platform release, pay attention. Let's go to the next uh, um, topic, which is the the real challenges. So the challenges, we understand the technology challenge, we understand the program challenge, we understand the process challenge. But when we look at um, the winning goals, right? One, two, three, four, at the same time, leadership team, leadership and team alignment. So I want to make sure uh, Marcus, um, you know, you you work with um, a large team, a large delivery team, um, probably global team. And then when you are talking about product, I guess you get a lot of attention from the top down, from the leadership all the way to the development team. But when it comes to the platform um, release, do you get the similar attention? If not, what will help you to get that attention from the top to bottom? Yeah, I think, yeah, like you said, the the product one comes within the company. There's, you know, that has the attention. Mm. Uh, Platform naturally does not, right? But but you have to, we have to be, you know, very much aligned step in step with with IT and business on those things, right? Because we, obviously the platform release could impact you negatively if you don't address it. So you have to react to it. Um, so you have to have that leadership and the team alignment and being aware of it coming through, um, those updates are coming. Right. And then, and then it's an education and shared, uh, kind of vision uh, for your roadmap of the, the, the great, um, you know, functionality and features that Salesforce roll out too, that you want to take advantage of. And that may be both technical or functional, right? They may be new enhancements that, that enable your, your development team to do things differently. Right, or maybe things that are coming through from a functional perspective, where where you can implement new functionality that may enhance your applications. So you want to take advantage of those, and 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 help drive your your product forward. I hear you, but so if I were to ask this question in a different way, to get the leadership attention for a platform release, is there any magic pill that you have, or you can give us some? idea or suggestion, hey, leadership, we need to pay a lot of attention to the platform release and so that we can take advantage of the innovation. What have you done or is there anything some uh, that you do special that people pay attention to? It? Um, I, I don't think it's anything special that, that you do specifically around the, that, that I do, like, mm-hmm. but, but I, we have, um, you know, regular meetings with my with my uh, uh, with my business counterparts, mm-hmm. right? With with Bain and Knights st- talking about we have uh, roadmap reviews and looking at the vision for the application, and and so that's part of that discussion, right? Of what's coming in within uh, within the release, and and a lot of times with the platform releases, it's, it's not like you have to implement it with that release. So you know spring 22, right? Here comes Salesforce, right? It's not like I have to like, oh, on that day, I have to implement this functionality. No, like Salesforce implements that enables you to take advantage of it. And then maybe your next product release or, you know, a couple of product releases later on, you're implementing to take advantage of that functionality. That's that's a great point. Thank you. So uh, that's, that's a good approach. I, I like that. It's a good lesson that, you know, we can tell them you don't have to implement right away, which but it is good for us if we implement it. So we may have to allocate the time and the budget. 
Okay, thank you, Marcus. So, Janiel, I see uh, testing, testing, testing. So, um, in, in this, uh, thank you for providing us with uh, your expertise in terms of the content for this uh, uh, the round table. Salesforce, why it's a SaaS product, and you were you said lack of testing and development checks and balances, lack of integration in the testing environment. Why do you need to test when Salesforce takes care of, you know, they, they, uh, they automatically promote you to the next release? What's the point in testing and what's, uh, maybe I'm, um, I'm not 100% clear the reason why we need to be testing uh, thoroughly uh, from one release to another when we go from one to the next release? Yeah, absolutely. Not yeah, no, that's a great question uh, there, Velu. So it, the platform code is underlying on top of which your product code exists. So it, it's absolutely fundamentally extremely important that the, your product code is compatible with your platform code that is coming in. So by that, what I mean is at the platform level, the changes that are the types of changes that, that Salesforce is putting in um, are either something that's deprecated or something that used to work is won't be working going forward. So it impacts the, the product code. So you want to make sure that your product code is compatible with that, which is out there more importantly in production. Uh, some defects that may have been fixed by Salesforce that is also coming in. You want to make sure that though they are also compatible with the types of changes that maybe you had either accommodated for that defect or um, you know, you don't want to come into a situation where A broke B, where Salesforce fixed something, but it, it inadvertently now it's breaking your code because of the types of code that you kind of coded around it. Uh, Salesforce also is putting in some innovative changes in there too for like ease of use, which is more to kind of leverage uh, those capabilities for your business functionalities in your cycles as well. So testing to help make sure that you're even capitalizing on, on some games and not just purely acting reactive to, to something that's broken. So, so testing can also play a very uh, forward-looking role uh, in terms of what more you could do with the platform in that sense. And then the fourth thing that uh, Salesforce also puts in is like new functionalities, brand new things. And just in general, I think the testing at each step of the way, it really helps ensure that your product code that's on top of the platform code that there is that, that seamless compatibility, but also you're leveraging some innovation when it's provided to you by the platform. No, that's a interesting point of view. And thank you for sharing that, uh, Janiel. When I look at uh, this particular uh, slide, so the the leadership and team alignment, which is, um, you know, as Marcus said, you know, we I'm a product owner. I get a lot of attention from the leadership, the platform, I may have to a little bit struggle to explain, but they do get it. I can understand. Um, at the same thing with respect to the process. Uh, the process here, automation is something that we should pay attention to because um, if you're doing a lot of manual work, um, it, it's not going to help you if you're running a large uh, Salesforce org in an enterprise environment. And then when it comes to technology, I think uh, there is a lot of technology tools out there uh, to augment um, to, uh, to your DevOps process. And I think it's an important piece that we look at the program holistically, make sure we have the right processes and make sure that we are using the technology. I was looking at yesterday, um, I think App Exchange, they have done 10 million installs. So App Exchange is, is a big, big ecosystem we all should take an advantage of using the, 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 the ecosystem to manage our life. I Hopefully we have life to um, manage the proper delivery uh, processes. So let's, let's move on to the next uh, topic, which is uh, I find it a little bit more interesting. And it is whether you have a product release or a platform release, you do have a development life cycle. So, what I um, see from this um, slide, regardless whether, regardless whether it's a product release or whether it's a platform release, you are um, looking at um, similar steps, our strategy, steering committee, implementation, testing, and deployment. So question for you, uh, Marcus, 
what challenges specifically do you or do we face do you, as a product owner uh, from each step can you give us your perspective or experience which step is more difficult for particular release whether it's a product which one would be much easier to deal with when it comes to product um for product i feel I mean, the harder part for i think from my experience is usually the um the the getting the first two steps right mm -hmm. because once you get through those and and especially if you have an established team right then you're you're getting in more into okay yep we've got everything ready to go we're used to, we're used, we have a pattern that we're using from a development and design and, and test automation. And you're kind of just plugging into that engine, right? But it's that the initial strategy and, and the, uh, the, those program activities around the strategy and steering committee that could change all the time, right? Depending on where the new asks are coming from, right? And you're working maybe with different business partners there. So those are the things that I think that are changing more frequently. But if, if you have a, um, a well-established team, then the implementation QA, UAT, and deployment kind of goes into this cranking engine. Mm. Um, obviously, it takes time and, and, and effort to get to that point. At the beginning, um, of if, if you're kind of an immature application, then your, your implementation QA and UAT deployment may be, may be harder because you haven't really established those. You haven't gone through and, and set your processes uh, so that so that it does go through. So it depends a little bit on, on where you are in, in your life cycle of, of your product. Well, thank you, Marcus. So Genio, when you, um, I'm asking the same question, but I also have a follow-up question. So what's your perspective in terms of platform release? Which step would be harder and why? Yes, yeah, so a great question again, Bebo. So for organizations that are, are still kind of battling to un understanding the platform release and maybe going through like firefighting a bit until they kind of hit that maturity curve, right? The the whole process really starts with, with really going in the backward trickling effect, right? So starting with deployment, UAT, and like, so it, the firefighting starts directly at, at that level where you're, you know, seeing something in production, you're being very reactive, something broke, and you're literally trying to put in a change very quickly. What actually ends up being the hardest thing is really all the, the, the first initial step and not having that in place, which is the strategy or steering committee to help make sure that, you know, the firefighting doesn't even have to happen to begin with. Like there is oversight, there is, uh, a, a, you know, objective, there is like a timeline, there is a plan towards you know, having the knowledge, you know, and the platform releases, they do provide, um, you know, the, those versions, the pre-version, like the, the, the release uh, sandboxes where you can really test your code, uh, your production code on it. You can test your, your new code that's about to go into production on it. So you can really be very thorough about this entire way and, and planning it out ahead of time. What I'm seeing in the industry is like, the first two things the strategy and steering committee often are missing um, and, and things go directly into like, you, you know, implementation, QA, UAT and the deployment and, and just the vicious cycle that often the companies try to kind of get out of. Uh, so, so those are the strategy steering committee are, are often most overlooked or, or has been the, the toughest one to sell is also because, you know, that's not their, their baby is the product release. They're, they're putting a lot of their time, they're focusing their, they're funding it and everything. So it just, it wanna, happens to be one of the things that often doesn't get his attention in platform release. I, I, I hear you. So what, so when we look at these two releases, my, my immediate um, reaction are when I thought about this particular piece, I looked at uh, the DevOps. So how much DevOps, especially tools, there are a lot of tools out there, DevOps tools, um, the ecosystem in Salesforce is maturing. Um, if you ask me 10 years ago, people would ask me, what is DevOps in Salesforce? You just use the change set, just move the code. Right. But now the automation, um, especially the test automation, a DevOps engineering, they call it. Um, so they, 
i see there is a um, uh, that they, they make our life a lot easier um, i have seen it but i haven't you know i've been in the devops world only for a few years even though i've been in the system ecosystem for many years um, i just want to get from each one of you or from both of you to give us your perspective how does devops help in product release and platform release Absolutely, I can I can uh, start there. So in a sense, DevOps is actually kind of creating almost like an engine where yeah. you know things that are manual and perhaps um, you know that that could break through due to human error, right? In terms of compiling the code, packaging the code, deploying the code, the automation really removes those human errors out of the place, but also it speeds up the entire process as well, where you can run a lot of these cycles say overnight when somebody doesn't have to be present and sitting there and running it on their system. Uh, the automation also helps really, you know, make the entire process very objective as well, right? So if the code's breaking, it's breaking, not because somebody didn't do something right or, or whatever. So the processes are, are in place for a reason because it helps to help make sure that the criteria and the gate checks and all of those are, are really thought through ahead of time and put in place for a reason that the organization is most comfortable with. The layer of deploy, the, the DevOps and automation that is simply orchestrating and facilitating on those processes that have already been put in place and just kind of making the process that much smoother, faster, and more efficient in, in, in its turn. So I'm a very a big proponent of actually leveraging those tools. As a matter of fact, when it comes from center of excellence perspective, there are center of excellences that are being put together purely all around just DevOps. And the entire purpose of that center of excellence is to help continue the efficiency and smoothness of DevOps uh, in the process along the way. So it, it's it's interesting. I totally agree with you, David. Uh, great. So Marcus, if I take uh, the, the third step and the fourth step from bottom up, implementation, UAT, even deployment, um, if we do the DevOps um, and automation, do you agree that your life as a product director um, is going to be a lot easier? For sure, right? I mean, yeah, you, it, it's kind of what we're talking about getting that, establishing that engine, right? Which DevOps is a huge part of, right? For, from a release management perspective, having those standardized processes that Jane Neal talked about too, right? That, that That's gonna remove a lot of that ad hoc and the noise and the firefighting, right? You've established, you know what you're doing, you know who's supposed to do it at what time, and, and, and you kind of tried and true practices, including, you know, doing from, from a deployment perspective, doing uh, mock deployments into to, to different sandboxes, right? So you when you actually go to production, that's not the first time you're doing this, right? You're, you can do this to, to, to a, other sandboxes ahead of time um, so that you, you're, you're not gonna hit the surprises when you go into production. Um, I hear you, I think um, so. When I look at these last three steps are the implementation, UAT and deployment, that's where we should start thinking about automation, uh, DevOps. Um, the ecosystem is so big. Um, you know, I've seen even some of the other innovative tools that help make these processes um, as simple as possible. One question to both of you before we go to the next uh, topic. In terms of... Um, um, automation, we talked about automation, we talked about the DevOps. Is there any other gotchas in terms of, you know, surprises that you have seen in your experience managing your product release or oh, last minute, I need to do something so that I can make this happen. If you were to look at the implementation UAT and deployment, where do you see the most number of challenges you see? And just the practical challenges that you face, where do you see the most, Marcus? Yeah, for me, I uh, I feel like the most of the challenges that we have to deal with and that we have to pay very close attention to is what's happening around us during implementation. So for, for my product, it's very highly integrated with lots of different services and things and APIs across HCSC. So we're dependent on, on them. So when we go to production, 
to make sure that we line up all of the other areas that need to um, you know, support and be there as well. Is someone implementing ahead of us, together with us, after us, account for all those different scenarios? I hear you. So before we go to the next uh, topic, um, Janiel, you want to add anything more to this? This is very critical for us companies to have a good release management life cycle. Uh, anything that we are missing that people can learn from your experience? Well, we covered a lot around technology today in our discussion and mm -hmm. the, the hands on the keyboard and, and where things kind of uh, happen uh, and so forth. Um, where the other thing that I feel is very important to mention is are the first three steps from the bottom up, right? Where there, if there are any stories that have been like put in uh, last minute, which happens in our release cycles and our sprint plans, they statistically speaking, they're the riskiest, right? Because the code was quickly developed. Uh, the, the, the architects and the developers may not have had enough time to actually assess the, all the impact assessment around it. The testing may not have been adequate around it. Like, so all of the things that uh, any last minute changes that kind of come in, statistically speaking, end up causing quite a bit of problem down the road, even into like deployment and, and, and into production. So, so those are, that's also another area to kind of keep in mind where it's sometimes easy to kind of just look at deployment package onward to see what's happening. But the, the also challenges around how business is actually working with technology and IT teams and how things are prioritized and, and brought in, uh, having a systematic approach that we talk about you know, in the development process is also equally important in the decision process of what changes come in at what time, um, because they also end up uh, causing an issue down the road. So just the other point that the only thing that I wanted to add to that topic as well. Thank you. I think, um, go ahead. Yeah, I'll add one more thing that I thought about too that here and during the discussion, and it's the, the frequency and the size of your product releases. You are much better off moving frequently in smaller chunks. I, I think, you know, this is something that I've, I think I've experienced even more with Salesforce than maybe other, you know, kind of custom development applications and things like that. Um, then doing kind of a large bang implementations in Salesforce. Cause when you're doing those, those deployments to production, you're having, you know, merge conflicts or whatever that, that you're dealing with in, in those deployments. Moving frequently in smaller chunks ha is is a it may seem to be more overhead in that you're doing it more frequently, but you you get if you get good at doing those small chunks frequently, it is a whole lot less work than 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 doing like large big band uh, releases. I I hundred percent agree with you, and I was uh, we did one uh, roundtable discussion a while ago. They were talking about Netflix and Google how often they release. In a day, they will release few yeah. <laughs> releases. So yeah. you can imagine Netflix and those kind of companies. So I, I think that DevOps uh, engineering, that's where you need that automation, you need the technology. Yeah. And uh, even Salesforce, as a matter of fact, they do release quite a bit. I do not have the details, but I was told that they release quite a bit behind the scene. Okay. so. I think um, a, a good lesson here, you got to have a good process. You need to have the steps clear. And then coming back to the same um, topic, if you go back to your um, next um, slide, schedule deployment, schedule and control. So it's a flow chart. It's a pretty, uh, it's not intense, but it's a, it's a good size flow chart or a chart for you to follow. But I'm just going to, um, so we know, we all understand as a, as a CEO leaders or product owners, anybody in the de uh, deployment lifecycle or the Salesforce um, uh, deployment, scheduling and controlling is very, very important. So I would like to get your thought process, uh, Janiel, what what does this mean? Schedule and control. It's it makes it's a common sense. But can you help us to understand why is it so important? How does it work in a real world? Yes, absolutely. So 
Um, again, by the way, um, as I say this, uh, people, uh, the viewers, they're welcome to kind of take the process uh, from this slide and kind of make it their own as well. Um, and so scheduling control, it, it really all ends up being about the checks and balances. You always want to make sure that you have the right checks and balances along the way. You're not just making sure, you're not just making one person do everything where there is high uh, probability of like, a, like an issue occurring. You always want to have somebody kind of checking each step along the way in the right way, in an objective kind of way. And these checks and balances have been already predefined and determined as part of your overall process. As, as when you define these checks and balances, you also want to make sure you're associating the right roles and responsibilities of, uh, along with that path as well. So all the way to the left, you're talking about the, the role of the lead developer, the governance, and also the deployment specialist. And this is also important because you know when you actually come to like firefighting scenario that we have actually talked about a few times on this call that you want to make sure that somebody like deployment specialist is not burdened with the responsibility or, or the decision process of whether or not this is going to, it's a go, no go kind of scenario. You, the, all of that has to be already be established and the leader has to jump in to actually make some of those decisions along the way and not making, uh, you know, your team member uh, or junior team member to have to make those decisions. It's a tremendous level of pressure and responsibility that you end up putting somebody. So that's uh, one thing to kind of mention there. But these checks and balances should also be predefined well ahead of time and, and exercised in the most objective kind of way in terms of, you know, if you're opening, whether it's a ticket that you're opening or you're, you're tracking some type of another process that is followed along to make sure that it did go through the entire chain so that if something were to go wrong, you know what step maybe was overlooked or which process maybe was not followed. Um, with the goal being that the process is what's really going to help make the entire process smooth each time where you come to a point where companies are, can do like two releases in a day. And the reason why they're able to do that is because they've actually gotten these you know, schedules and controls down extremely well uh, to a degree that it, it takes the pressure off from people and puts all the responsibility down into the, the systems of that's governing uh, the entire orchestration. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's what I feel is really the scheduling control that's been uh, successful in the market these days. Uh, so, unless what I'm hearing from you, Janiel, unless we have a good process and good control, it's not feasible for you to release as often as you need, not you want, you need, right? Because things do change. You can't, um, um, especially we are in the healthcare industry, we get a lot of deadline oriented requests that need to be done. There's no choice. You got to make it happen. And we more and more rely on Salesforce platform for a lot of things, uh, customer service, provider management, insurance, group insurance, and so on and so forth. So Marcus, when you look at the schedule and control, is there anything that we are um, uh, you can add to it and see why is this important? What's your perspective on this? It's, it's critical. I mean, as a, as a product owner, right? You can't have, I can't have, you know, a developer be like, oh, I'm just going to go and deploy this thing, right? And this developer is going to deploy this thing, right? I mean, you know, after a week, you're going to have like no control over your application, I have no idea what's going on. And you don't know, you know, you, you don't know what's in a test environment. You don't know what's in production, what made it to here and here. Like it's just, it, it would be chaos, right? So you have to, unless you're a company of one, right? Where you, you have your own company and using Salesforce, you, you may be filling those roles, but if not, right, you, you've got to, 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 to have schedule and control. Uh, otherwise, it, 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 things are going to start breaking left and right, right? And you cannot gain efficiency and speed unless you do have it, uh, you know, and, and people know what their role and their responsibility is. Um, I hear you, Marcus. And I think this is where I believe the automation and the DevOps engineering coming come into play, right? So if you have automation, a lot of things can be automated um, in this whole process. And when there is a need for you to intervene uh, to make sure that things are going, if something breaks, you can fix it much faster and do it right. Um, so I do agree with the both of you that schedule and control is very critical for our 
um, um, for everybody's success. And hopefully people don't have to work evenings and the weekends, which still happens with all these controls in place. We still work in the evenings, work in the weekends. It's not necessarily because we work late hours in the evenings and the weekends. I think the business demand is such that we cannot bring down the system because when you move the code, you do need to make sure that the system is available during the normal business hours and then you just move on. Um, I just want to make sure that what my statement is validated by between um, Janiel and Marcus. Is that the fair statement that why we work in the evenings and the weekends? Is it because it's the systems need to be available during the normal business hours? Yeah, I mean, that that's we, we do our changes normally on off hours. Usually, if it's a larger release, we usually do it on a Friday evening, exactly for that reason, right? That I mean, we, we have people in there that are, 24 seven. So, you know, even, even when we do it on, on a Friday evening, right, we want to minimize the disruption and, and Salesforce certainly helps that the actual deployment itself, it is, you know, very, very quick. Um, you know, we're, we're, you know, in, in a other deployment, if I'm doing like my Java based application or something like that, and I have to bring down all these servers and do deployments and all these things, right. Then, then your, your outage is significantly more. Um, and so Salesforce certainly helps minimize that uh, that downtime. Great. So I think we have a question that somebody raised their hand. Generally, we don't stop. So Christian, please go ahead, ask your questions. Thank you so much. So it's really more of a, of a question or a comment. Uh, so Marcus, you touched upon, you have some uh, employees which are 24-7, uh, where, you know, downtime is a something if you're a global organization, you don't really have that because you always have users uh, entering your, your application, right? Um, and the other part was around uh, deployment. Uh, you mentioned on a Friday and I just, uh, I, you know, from experience, uh, Friday is a really, really bad day to do deployments, probably better to do it on a Monday or Tuesday uh, where, where you don't have to uh, destroy developers uh, weekends if something were to go wrong, right? Well, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think thanks, it's, it, it made it to everyone of, for, for all your, your great input. I'm, I'm learning a lot. So thanks a lot. No, thanks for, for your question. Um, I, I, it may depend on your, uh, on your company as well, as far as like, what is, what's their most important time? Uh, for, for our company, Monday and Tuesday from a business perspective is our heaviest days. So we want to avoid doing anything that causes, you know, that could cause disruption during those two days. And so we, we lean towards having more. And when we have norm, like smaller deployments, we, we normally do that on uh, a Tuesday or Wednesday evening. Uh, but if we have a larger thing where it needs to be coordinated with more areas and, and, and kind of more, more, more of a risk, or you may need to look at like, we may need something on Saturday and Sunday to, to potentially, and th this is more kind of like a quarterly kind of thing where, you, where you're doing this, where you're scheduling that to have more, more, uh, uh, more time to react to something if something goes wrong so that you're not having a business impact. And yeah, unfortunately it does, it does cause people to, to lose their you know, Friday evening. Um, even though we've during the pandemic we've seen less of a uh, less of an issue with with loosening your Friday evening than to what we had before. Now, that's a good question. Thank you, Marcus, for filling in. Um, so I would uh, like to move to the next uh, topic. So we see it's a release management is it's a, it's a science and it's also a little bit of an art in my opinion. Um, so it's not. It's, um, like uh, Christian asked, okay, why do you have to do it on Friday? You are taking the time away from people. So you got to pay attention. You need to balance the act and make sure that we are giving the right experience to our employees as well. So um, the best practices. So this is where we, um, I feel uh, that is a, a formal, um, I think there was a, somewhere I was reading uh, either here or some other uh, blog, See, the, the best practices is the best practice only when you can follow the steps and you have the people to execute your steps. So when I look at this um, um, particular slide, 
strategy, prioritization, process consistency, and then planning and risk monitoring. And you certainly you have the risk, uh, the steering committee to help you formalize release plans, formalized environments. These are all there. Automated testing can be an asset. But despite all these things, we still have challenges during the deployment. Okay, look at this. This is a particular slide says, it's an ideal world, everything exists, but it doesn't work. And we all know that it doesn't work. So I wanna hear from both of you, Janiel and Marcus, what can go wrong during the deployment? Maybe you give your experience, we'll let's share with our audience. Janiel. Yeah, I mean, a lot can, right? In the sense, like if some of these best practices, if we really take a look at it, like if we're kind of skipping them, then that is essentially what you're doing is adding, opening up a doorway to add risk into the model in some shape or form. So for example, uh, prioritization, that's kind of like you use that as an example a little bit earlier in terms of if the business is not prioritizing certain stories or certain functionalities in the right time, the right way, developers don't have enough time to develop it the right way or assess all they do, the impact assessment on that or dependencies uh, checks uh, around all of that as well. Uh, followed by the trickling effect that it can have on maybe not enough testing or not catching certain things in testing. So all of these things kind of cohesively play almost a, a concert like in, in this entire process of like deployment. Um, and it, as, a, as a leader, like it's, it's often um, easy to kind of follow the, the rabbit hole of just kind of solving for the symptoms which end up being a, your bill breaking or finding an issue in production and immediately fixing that and, and, but not really going towards what's causing those symptoms, right? Like the key issues where there were, could be like the process inconsistencies or, um, you know, not having the right governance to, to really orchestrate like how business and technology or IT teams kind of work together. So, so all of them, I feel they start to kind of come into play. Um, so those are some of the high level trends and challenges that I've also noticed in the sense in the market uh, when it comes to the deployment best practices and, and the issues that can stem from it if they are not instilled over, over time, right? Um, thank you. So I do have one point that I wanna make because I've learned over the years um, before I make my point, I wanna hear from Marcus what do you see um, as, even though we have the best practices, we still have challenges, you know, things in, during the deployment. So can you share with us, please? Yeah, and I would say, uh, bring it on two different parts. One being that platform deployment, right? So when Salesforce deploys your, their platform change, their winter release or spring release, right? The main thing there is that you, you've got to be able, you, you've got to test it beforehand, right? And we talked about that. But you got to make sure that you're testing it in an environment that matches production too, right? So you may have your delivery path and you're working on your product release. And so you've made changes in your test environments in preparing for your production run. And here comes the, the platform release. Mm. So you've got to have a plan around, okay, how do I test that? Because I want to test that with what, what matches in production. So if you're changing your lower environments for a product release, and at the same time, here comes a platform release, you've got to have a, a separate sandbox that you can validate the platform release in as well. And that's where automated testing is huge, right? When you, when you, if you have an automated test suite that you can run and just do a, a validation, you don't have to, you know, spend a lot of hours. And then, you know, platform release is one of the things, like there could be other things changing. Google Chrome update, right, comes through and you want to do a val validation of that to make sure you don't have an issue, right? You can run your automated test suite. So the more you can automate, the better, both from a testing perspective and from a you know, deployment perspective. Um, and when it comes to your product releases, you know, best practices, again, you know, automating it. Automated testing is going to help you too. Um, getting it into that um, in, in, into that engine, right? Repeatable engine that, that can that can work and, and crank through. Um, I get you, and um, I agree with both of you. And certainly, you have uh, 
brought in good perspective and why is it so important that your deployment um, the best practices should be in place and follow the practices, not just having in place is one thing and make sure that you're following the best practice. Uh, one thing that I have uh, noticed in my experience, uh, the uh, segregation of duties. So companies oftentimes um, in the process, we tend to give um, additional privileges for people in the different roles. You have a lead developer, you have a deployment specialist, you have an admin, all these people. So to make sometimes, you know, uh, what I have learned or at least with uh, a, a large security implementation for my current project, make sure that you have a segregation of duties properly defined. What can a developer do? What can a deployment manager do? What can other people do in the, this process? So, uh, so having that clear distinction will help protect your data because there's a lot of companies, data is not just, data is a confidential information, but data is not, data is not data alone is a confidential, even metadata is a confidential. So giving a privileged access to people who should not have I would recommend the company should take a look at it because we just want to get things moving. At the same time, we don't want to lose the control or the privilege of the user access. So something that I learned, I just what thought I would share with you. I know we are almost there. We still have about nine minutes. So I want to make sure that we are covering and answering the questions. Um, so, Release management, we are talking about two, again, platform and product. This is a, a big slide, which has got a lot of information I'm not going to read through, um, but there is always you know, processes that can be followed for both. Te uh, the technology can be followed, even the steering committee, every step that you have in your release, product release can be applied to the platform release. But I want to hear from both of you, what are the key tech takeaways for people who are watching this and going to be listening in the future? Give us top three takeaways from each one of you. I start with Marcus. Yeah, and I think we've, we've touched on a lot of these in the yes. previous slides too. So, um, you know, it, the, really the key part is that in the middle there, right? Where, where the platform and product intersect, mm -hmm. right? That you have your, um, your clear roles and responsibilities, right? That you just mentioned as well, Valu, right? And it, it doesn't, it's not that it just helps you with your current work and your current employees, but the inevitable situation where you have people leave and you have to hire someone else in, right? If you have clear roles and responsibilities, it's going to take you, you know, it's going to be 10 times faster and easier to, you know, uh, ramp someone up if, if it's a clear role and responsibility versus like, hey, you know, sometimes I'm going to do this. Sometimes someone else does something like it, it's impossible for someone to come into that situation and, and be um, get ramped up quickly. Um, and then the, um, you know, scheduling the product and platform releases, having a, a well-defined plan for how you are gonna deal with your product versus platform releases and having that sequence laid out. As I mentioned, you know, if you're working on a, um, on a product release, but you have to also take into account how, you know, a platform release that's coming in maybe before or after, right? You don't wanna to be too close to it. So can you move your product release? Uh, which environment are you gonna be testing it in? So that if you do run into an issue, you know, how are you gonna deploy that change, right? If it, it, and it's going to be different for every one situation. It's just that you got to think through that and plan that out. In, in my environment, we have parallel path, deliver, two, two parallel delivery paths. So that creates a very good way for us to, to test against production for a platform release and being able to deploy something if we need to. But if you have a single path, you may have changed that single path and you need to have a separate kind of emergency path that you can go up if you need to address something to, to a platform release. So just thinking through that plan, 
um, I think is is key. And always be aware kind of of, of where what, what you need to uh, be able to test and, and, and change for a platform release versus a product release. Thank you, Marcus. Jay Neal? Yeah, I think kind of Marcus actually covered uh, those, those main points. So I would definitely uh, echo that as well. I mean, it really simply, it's uh, de definitely you got to have that uh, roles and responsibility, clarity, um, have like a, a good uh, orchestration of, in terms of what sandboxes you're, you're putting together and for what reason, right? So that you can actually test your product code against the platform code. Um, and also have backward compatibility. You, you really want to have full control and visibility into what you're putting to production and, and what's coming in from a platform as well. So you really want to make sure there's a full understanding of that. So having a good um, a, a breadth of like kind of making sure you have the right sandboxes set up for the right strategy of test, that's extremely important as well. And then obviously just uh, you know, leverage automation. Uh, as much as possible as well, because automation is going to lead to efficiency, but then also don't forget about the innovation part as well in your uh, platform release. Often overlooked, people are usually firefighting with platform release, but, but do know that you're paying for those licenses, you're getting some, some neat features that are coming in, make it part of your cycle as well to leverage those. Um, so that's what I would say. Thank you, Janiel. I can reiterate what you said. I completely agree with both of you. What in my experience, the platform release, Salesforce releases every year, every year, three times, as we all know. And so my recommendation, if the companies do not have um, a good platform release management process, they might have processes, but if they are not taking advantage of the innovation, my thought here, or my recommendation would be spend time to understand what Salesforce is releasing, take the features that you want to implement, work with your business partners to help them understand. As a product owner, I release this product feature, but Salesforce is releasing on top of it. We want to make sure that we're allocating the budget and the fund, the right funding for that release and make sure as Marcus said in the beginning, you may not have to implement it right away in the uh, next product release, but as long as you have it in the roadmap and you have scoped out that work, I think you can use this. So I was talking to one of the very large system integrators um, about a couple of years ago. Every company, not every company, many companies are using Salesforce. Let's say you use Salesforce and your competition is using Salesforce. How do you distinguish? Because it's the same thing, same product service cloud or sales cloud or a health cloud? How do you distinguish between you and your competition? I think that's where the innovation, if you can take advantage of the innovation from Salesforce, weave that into your product management, product release management, I think you will be ahead of your competition. So that is something that I learned over the years by working with many companies. So I do personally feel that is a great way to weave that innovation into your product management. So now we are almost there. We have two minutes. I have uh, four questions. I, I, I see the questions here. Um, um, so um, there are quite a few questions, but I'm going to talk. Um, um, so the person who asked the question, Suman, is the release management challenges the same across the board? Are there any additional nuances in healthcare we should consider, specifically healthcare? Is there anything that we should consider? I personally don't think whether it's a healthcare or financial services, except the compliance part of it, you know, the last change quite a bit faster in a manufacturing versus healthcare. Anybody wants to add to it? I would agree with you. I don't think there is a lot of nuances specific to healthcare or technology. I think the release management challenges may depend more on your how you're set up, right? Both within and, and kind of the scope of your application of, you know, how much integration do you have with other applications or services um, and, and the tools and things that you're using, right? And, and yeah. Uh, I hear you. So one question uh, from Christian, um, uh, Marcus, how often do you release to prod 
and what are your deployment tools? Uh, maybe instead of asking, I mean, uh, Christine, we probably don't want to um, talk about the tools that we use here. Uh, this is uh, specific uh, to us, and I don't want to say this product is better product than other product. I don't want to endorse that in our meeting. So that's a question. If you want, you are always welcome to reach out to Marcus directly through yeah. LinkedIn. So that would be helpful. Can I, can I reframe? Maybe just say, are you using some some tools uh, beyond uh, you know Salesforce native uh, chain sets uh, okay. and and Absolutely. so forth? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we, we that, that's, uh, yes, we do. Um, so now one more question, let me see. Yeah, and, then, and I guess the, the other question is how often do we release the prod? So that, so we have that parallel delivery path, which helps us do that. So we have, uh, we have about last year, we had seven major and I think 14 minor or so. So I think it was somewhere in the twenties as far as, releases to production. Um, so the major ones, not quite once a month, um, but overall we're releasing close to twice a month. Which is good, every every two sprints we are releasing one. So, which if it's a two week sprint. Um, okay, great. So we are 501 and uh, we are about a minute over and I'm sure everybody wants to get back to your dinner table. We are in Chicago, so those who are outside you know, I don't know your dinner time. Um, so first of all, thank you, uh, Janiel. Uh, thank you, Marcus, for joining. And thank you, everybody else who joined today. If you have any specific questions, you are welcome to reach out to uh, Janiel, Marcus, and myself directly. Um, so you will find us on LinkedIn. And um, I'm, not, we are, I'm not promising or I'm not expecting them to really get back to you right away. We have other things to handle, but certainly, we will be happy to assist um, you any way we can. And if you think that you can share some of the things with us, please feel free to share with us. And then this recording will be posted on the website a week from now. And um, once again, thank you. Um, and uh, you all have a great uh, Friday and a great weekend. Thanks for the opportunity, Velo. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Velo, for inviting us. Oh, you're welcome. Have a good day. All right, thank you. Thanks. Yeah.